Hello and welcome to part 2 in our character selection tutorial mini-series. In the last episode we worked on creating the wardrobe and photo shoot actors for our characters so we can have them displaying their thumbnails correctly on the screen. In this episode we're going to set up the rest of the UI to allow us to choose different characters and display their character in full view on the screen along with their name. So let's begin. So the first thing we need to do is create our character selector actor. This is very similar to the photo studio except for that it's actually going to be used in the actual game itself. So we're going to create a new blueprint class. I'm going to choose actor and we call this one the character selector. And in here we're going to have a few things in our component list. But first we're going to have the skeletal mesh and the default for this one will just set to one of the characters there we'll do barbarous is and we'll give them the default uh, animation blueprint attached to that component we're going to have our spring arm and this spring arm we're going to rise up almost like eye line or shoulder line and i'm going to rotate it a little bit around Okay, um, then on touch this spring arm, we're going to have a camera. And this particular camera is going to be a scene capture component. This is so that we can capture what we're recording here and put it onto a texture for later use. So, for this, you want to make sure the camera's rotation is set to 0, 0, 0, so it follows the spring arm. And its location is also set to 0, 0, 0. It's just a matter of adjusting the spring arm to your liking. Um, so I'm going to bring this in a bit closer. I'm going to change this to 100. Get a nice and close character there. And hit R and save. And you may also want to add lighting to this thing if you want to make it look a little bit nicer. Um, so for example, we may add on our thing here, spotlight. And we can position this however we want to be in our scene. Well, means have help yourself to whatever design you want this to be so after this we need to then set up on the event graph here on begin play we only want the capture component to record just one thing in particular and that's in this case itself we don't want to record anything else on it so that's quite important so let's go on to our scene capture component here and scroll down to the right and on texture target you're going to change this to be a render target and we'll give it a location here and we'll do character selector render and this one we're going to change the composite mode sorry keep the composite mode to overwrite and we will change the primitive render mode to use a show only list that means now we can pass through and begin play who we want to actually record with this thing so we're going to drag out from here and place our scene capture component 2d and from there we're going to call the show only actor components and the actor we want to do in here is self and we also want to tick include from all child actors compile on that and we are done here so next we're going to close this and we want to look at how this works so we want to place our character sets are somewhere in the environment it doesn't matter where as long as it's out of view of the main camera for the game uh, so i'm going to place this somewhere here that'd be fine just there on its own that um we then want to tell our game here to start off with a uh, particular camera in this case for our menu we're going to put the camera roughly here so let's put a camera in there And I'm going to pilot it into position. Okay, and this is going to be our main menu camera. Let's eject from that and go to the level blueprint. Now with that camera still selected, I should be able to right click and create a reference to the camera actor. And then create the begin play event. So at the start of the level, I want to tell the player controller to set the view target to this particular camera. So we get the player controller and there do set 
view target with blend and plug all that in there like so now we'll just snap the camera to that location file and save and then we want to get rid of on here the main menus uh, spawning of the default pawn we don't want to move anything like that so we're going to create a new uh, game mode just for this it would be main menu gm game mode and in here we're going to tell the default pawn class to be none compile and close that and then go finally to the world settings here and change the game mode override to use our new menu game mode if we push play now we should snap to this camera here and zip let's now get the ui that we made to uh, show on the screen so i'm going to go to my game modes here open full blueprint editor and on begin play we're going to do create widget and we're going to choose our character select screen we're then going to promote it to variable character select screen and then add that to viewport play and there's our thing we made last time we've got our three buttons characters so what i want to happen here is when i push on this button here i want my character selector actor that we made to show in this corner the actor they've got so let's close that and go back to our character select screen okay and in here we're going to add a very simple uh, image inside of a scale box so let's do a scale box drag it into canvas panel and this one's going to be attached to this left hand side of the canvas so i'm going to change anchor here to left hand side in fact actually i'll change it to stretch way now do offset on the top here for 200 and oh, and offset from bottom 200 and then on the position on the x i'm going to give that uh let's say 50 and size x will do i don't know by 500 maybe 600 that'd be fine okay so there's our first scale, scale box inside the scale box we're going to have an image so let's drag in our image and put that inside the scale box this image we're going to change the name of to be character select one so this would be the player one's character selection if you do multiplayer then you can have on the other side of the screen player two's character selection thing okay so with this done we're going to go now to the graph view of this and on the pre-construct we're going to now fetch all of our character slots so here i've got my character slots and what might be easier is actually just grabbing it from the grid itself so i'm going to go to uniform grid is variable and do character grid makes it a little bit easier because i can just go and get the character grid out and then do get all children that gives me every one of the slots in a nice easy to access node and then for each loop we're going to go through each one and cast to the character slot and the reason why we're doing that is because we need to set up the ability for us to hover on it to change the image of the character so let's go now to our character slot and i'm going to click on one of these here and click on the link up here take us to it and go to the graph of this now this button here has the ability to be hovered we need to set up an event dispatcher to send that information back to its parent so on event dispatchers add new one and we do is hovered Oh, just hover then and click on the button and then go and create a on hovered effect and on the hovered we're going to drag in our hovered event dispatcher and do call now when we call the hovered we actually do want to send over what information we have about our data so we need to send that across to that so on the hovered here we want to send a data table row so we go new input to data table row handle 
word data. Um, let's just refresh that. Pop that in. And the data is clearly going to be our data variable we have here assigned to it. So we're going to send back who we've clicked on or who we've hovered over rather. If I go now back to my character select screen, I want to get the individual images and meshes of our characters. So on the cast of character slot, we're going to do the binding. So bind event to hovered and drag from the event and do custom event. The hovered over character. And this is sending back that data that we found on that individual character. I'm going to take from there and we're going to break it apart, get the data table and the row name. We're going to use that to get the data table row and plug in the row name into that as well. That'll fetch us the correct row of information from our character thing. Now what's important about this is that we need to know what mesh we want to use for our characters. So on out row here we need to break it into the character struct. So we've got access to the name and mesh in particular. So we now need to send this mesh over to our character select actor that we made. Uh, this one. So for that we need to go into our, to our pre-construct here. And we're going to get actor of class. And we're going to choose our character select. And then promote that to a variable. Selector underscore one. I can now drag from our variable list now that selector one. And I can access that skeletal mesh that's on there. Get skeletal mesh. And from that, I can do set skeletal mesh. And that's going to be this mesh here. So I'll just plug that in to the row found. And that's it. So now, whatever one I'm hovering over, it will send over the mesh over to that character select. I just need now to put that character select onto my widget here. So let's go and create the material for this. So we're going to go create a new material. And this will be the character selection mat. And in here, we're going to first of all turn it into a UI texture by going down to the bottom and changing this, the material domain from surface to user interface. And then I want to have a texture sample. And the RGB of this is going to go into final color. And the alpha of this, we're going to do a one minus. Now, the reason why you're doing one minus is because what the scene capture component actually does is it inverts the alpha of it. It's kind of hard to explain, but if you ever looked at it, it will it will show it inverted, so the character would be invisible. So one minus flips it around, so the character is visible and the background isn't. So that will go into opacity mask, and then we just change that to be from opaque to masked. Why? Oh, pardon me. That's fine. Um, so here we'll give it a default one for this. Um, it doesn't really matter. Leave it like that. Okay, save that, and we're good. Now go back to our character select screen, and we are selected from the image over here. So we do here character selection mat. That goes into there just fine. And then we just need to set our render target to the texture here. So we'll do character. Selector render. Hit apply and we're good to go there. We go back to my character select screen and now it should be invisible because we haven't got any characters selected. So we're going to hit save on all this and let's test this out. So now you can see I've got a character here in full view and if I hover over different characters we should see different meshes. Now I'm not seeing a different mesh at the moment because our mesh is not set up on our data table. So let's take a look at doing that. And set up the individual meshes for our characters here. So barbarous, barbarous, forge, forge, cross giant, cross giant. Save that. And as I'm here, I'm also going to go into character selector render and up the size of the size X and Y to 2048. It's a much higher resolution, therefore a clearer image. 
play now. And there's our character, Barbarous. Hover over Forge. Forge will now show. Frost Strike will show now. There. Like so. Okay. So next we're going to make it show the name of the character. So let's go down to our, uh, rent, our uh, UI for this. Yeah, select screen. And I'll put some text here at the bottom of the screen here. So let's go drag in our text value. It's in the canvas panel. And this will be anchored close to the bottom of this. So what I might actually do is right click on the scale box and wrap that with a vertical box. And on the scale box, I'm going to set that to fill. But the text block, I'm going to put inside of that vertical box. And this will be the name of the character. So I'll make that center aligned. So I'll make it a little bit bigger too. That and we'll change the name of it to character name text. And tick is variable. Then if I go to the graph and on the end here where we set the skeletal mesh, we drag out the character name text, get that, and then we do set text. Plug this in and put plug in the character name from our struct file and save. Now let's go back to the game. You can see Barbarus is there, Forge, and now Frost Giant. And there we have it. We have a now functioning UI for our three characters. Obviously, you can add as many characters as you like, depending on your type of game that you're trying to do. In the next and last episode, we're going to go through the process of making it so we can click on one of these characters and then telling our next level to load in with the correct character. You can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where all patrons get access to my videos early before anyone else. I want to say a massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.